okay let's begin so in the last class we looked at uh, some techniques to eliminate the right of plane zero in the two stage miller opa and the basic uh, idea was the following in the second stage what we were doing was we wanted to exploit miller effect so we tried to put a capacitor cc in feedback around the gm like this right but the capacitor being a bilateral element it was allowing conduction both in feedback as well as in the forward direction so we wanted to kill the uh, feed forward conduction and uh, we saw one easy way to do that was to add a buffer a voltage buffer in series with our feedback cap like this right so now it is uh, clear that this buffer is going to conduct only in the feedback and there is not going to be any forward conduction so let me quickly uh, draw the complete thing so we have gm on here g1 c1 g2 and c2 so if you work out you'll find that this still has two poles the poles will be at the same location approximately and can you quickly tell me the pole locations what will be the dominant pole p1 yeah i mean let's not worry about the minus because the way we write the transfer function takes care of the left half plane yeah let's give approximate right cc times gm2 by g2 c1 is kind of neg uh, negligible what about p2 we love g2 plus gm2 something again g2 is smaller compared to gm2 so i'll ignore it so i'll have gm2 c by i'll have this guy so here again if i uh, come if i say c1 is much smaller than cc and c2 what does it simplify to gm2 by c2 so this will be the uh, pole location here also and you will find that there is going to be no rhp zero here right but uh, we saw finally we'll be implementing this buffer using a source follower the common drain and that's going to have a finite output resistance so the actual schematic that we might be implementing is this let me quickly show that so along with the uh, capacitor we'll also have a series resistor that denotes the output resistance of our source follower and this is the buffer right so now uh, in this case we'll again uh, because of the addition of this resistor here how many poles will have how many poles we had in this case we had three poles because the, this resistor here gave us a freedom to choose the third capacitor voltage so uh, we'll have three poles and again the first two poles will be approximately at the same location we'll have a third pole due to rc which usually will be at a high higher frequency and we also had an lhp zero right and that should not be surprising because whenever you have this kind of a series rc it's highly likely that you will get an lhp zero and that's simply because the total voltage here is some of the voltages across the capacitor and resistor each has uh, different phases so at some complex frequency this entire thing can go to zero and you can show this if this goes to zero this is a short <coughs> and if that is the case this output will also be zero hmm? so what is the zero location here i mean the, uh, the things happen because this total voltage go to zero at what complex frequency can this go to zero this total voltage when can it go to zero at what frequency one same minus 1 by srcc right so this is going to be rccc and this is been this will be in left of plane mm -hmm. and as you saw this is a good thing so we can use this guy to cancel the non dominant pole and improve our phase margin right 
Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, I'll come to that. Yeah. But uh, this this is nice. But I mentioned that uh, there is practical problem in using a source follower. And what was that? Gain. Not the gain. Yeah, gain is one thing, but more than that. No, no, not just that. This one, I told if you use a source follower, we'll have some other issues, right? I don't know if you read correct. So what do we see here? The swing limit will be significantly compromised, right? Because the moment you add the source follower, the output cannot just swing to one board drive. It has to account for one gate to source and one board drive. So that's why uh, this is not a common uh, choice. So the usual solution is to do the following. Oops, let me copy this guy. Okay. So what we did was we told this buffer is what is causing the issue. So we'll remove the buffer. And we just put an explicit resistor RC in series with our capacitor. So here again, I'll have three poles. The first two poles will be approximately at the same location. The third pole that will that is arising due to RC and uh, that you can show approximately to be one by RC. And if you think about it, in parallel to RC, we have all these three capacitors in series right because basically this is the equivalent circuit we have rc this is cc c1 and c2 and the ground is basically a connection right so this is the deal so across this guy you have all the three capacitors in series so the third pole is approximately at this location And you can also work out the transfer function. It's not uh, that difficult. And the simplest thing to do is we already derived the transfer function without RC. So in the transfer function, wherever you have uh, yes CC, you go and replace it with this guy. Okay. So then you will get a third order uh, polynomial because you have three poles. In the denominator you have a third order polynomial. So just like for a second order polynomial, how we approximated that the two poles are far apart you can use the same approximation so basically in the second order case we had uh, something like this a square plus b s plus c equal to 0 if you think about it what we did was uh, we told that one of the poles is at a much lower frequency for low frequencies for small values of s which of the terms will dominate here BS plus c. only this these two will dominate right for very low frequencies and that's what we kind of did. We uh, approximated this equation, saying this term only goes to zero. So that will give you the first pole like this. And at a higher frequency, oops. So this will give the first pole. And for the second pole, the these two terms will dominate. That will give you the approximate expression like this. I mean, we kind of arrived it by looking at the sum of the poles and product of the poles, but that virtually is the same thing. Okay. Now we will have a third order polynomial like this. So again, if I assume that all three poles are far apart, the lowest frequency pole that will be basically be due to these two terms. So the first pole will be at minus d by c. And as you keep increasing, these two terms will start to dominate. So you can approximate the equation as these two terms equal to 0. So that gives second pole to be minus c by b. And finally, the highest frequency will be this. Okay. This is actually a very good approximation as long as the poles are far apart. I mean, instead of, I mean, you, you, you can find a closed form expression for quadratic. Do you know closed form solution for uh, cubic equation? You can find, but no one has found it, right? I mean, you don't know at least. So there is no point in trying to find the exact solution, right? I mean, this is actually very good approximation as long as the three poles are far apart. As long as this is true, you can do this, okay? 
and actually if you do that again you will find that the first two poles will be approximately at the same location and the third pole will be at this. And we also saw this has a 0 and uh, the 0 location we kind of derived it in the last class and that was uh, at this location 1 by gm2 minus rc times cc. Okay. So now it is clear that if I choose rc to be 1 by gm2 what happens to the 0? It kind of goes to infinity so we kind of gotten we have gotten rid of the RHP 0. Okay. But if you think about it, uh, we have although we have eliminated the RHP 0, that was actually adding a phase lag to our system, we have introduced a third pole that is also going to add phase lag. So, we should actually see if this is even beneficial. right? So, let us quickly do that. So, if uh, under this condition, my RC is 1 by gm2. So, what does this approximate to? what is 1 by rc gm2 and then i will have uh, all these three which of the terms will dominate do you think c1 c1 i mean okay c2 will include the load capacitor you will have cc is an explicit capacitor that you are going to go and put so c1 is the parasitic capacitor there that's going to be the dominant one there so this we can approximate as gm2 by c1 Okay, so now we can do a comparison. So earlier the RHP zero, where was it at? If I didn't add the capacitor RC, where was RHP zero at? Huh? GM two by CC. Okay. So now where is my third pole at? It is at GM two by C one. And again the same logic C1 is a parasitic capacitor. So this third pole is going to be at a much higher frequency than the 0. So earlier you had a 0 that was adding phase lag. Now we have removed it. We are adding third pole that is at a much higher frequency. So the phase lag this third pole is going to add is going to be much smaller. So what can you say about the overall phase margin? Is it going to increase or decrease? Phase margin will increase. So this is indeed actually beneficial. And again you do not have to stop here. Here you see that if I choose RC to be greater than 1 by gm2, what happens to the pole? I mean what happens to the uh, 0? Z moves, 0 moves to LHP. So you can again use to cancel your uh, first non-dominant pole which is P2. Great. So, okay, so what will happen if I keep increasing RC? I mean, here it looks like if I keep increasing RC, the 0 comes to LHP. I can actually try to push this LHP 0 closer and closer and uh, improve the phase margin more and more. So, what will happen? Hmm? Sorry? Yeah, I mean, uh, that is the best case phase margin, that is true. But can I even keep increasing RC, uh, you know, uh, arbitrarily? What will happen? I mean, uh, what does RC, uh, if, in the sense, uh, what all things depend on RC here? Huh? Ah, that is exactly the point, right? See, here you see that RC also determines the third pole location. If you keep increasing RC, now your third pole which is at a far location that will start to come closer. Okay. See if you think about it, earlier we did not have anything and you had two poles G1 by C1 and G2 by C2 which are close enough. Then we just added the capacitor CC that split up the poles. So now you added RC, so that kind of eliminated the RHP0 but introduce the pole at a higher location. Now if you keep increasing RC at uh, some point, it is as though you do not have this feedback at all, isn't it? As he is saying if you make RC infinitely large, it is as though you do not have the feedback at all. So then you get back to the same old condition where we have two poles which are close enough. 
so point is don't get greedy too much so you can't make rc arbitrarily large this is because p3 will uh, come to uh, come closer and closer So this is the common technique that is often used and it's pretty simple. All you need to do is just add one extra resistor in series with your capacitor. Hmm? So now uh, let me also explain one other technique that is uh, commonly done. And to understand that let's again uh, look at our second stage and what's happening when we put the capacitor. And remember the reason we were putting this capacitor in feedback was to use Miller effect, right? And in essence what was happening was, if I apply some test voltage here, let us say uh, this, uh, this GM has an intrinsic conductance of G2, at low frequencies what can you say about the output voltage? Uh, it's, I mean, can you be more careful? It's partially, right? It's minus, right? I mean, it's applied to the negative terminal, right? Yeah, minus GM2 by G2 times V test. So, I'll uh, this is basically, I'll say minus A2 times V test, some gain. Hmm? So, in that case, what is the current that flows out of this test voltage? This is V test. Oops, sorry. Oops. Just a second. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? So this guy is one plus A two times V test times SCC. I can approximate as A two times SCC. And that is why looking in, it looks like a capacitor of A two times CC. The key point is uh, this is happening because this voltage source is drawing a current which is this. Okay. So hypothetically if I take this GM, so I have this test voltage source here. So if I were to put a current source here, this is say grounded. And if the current source value is the same, that is A2 times V test times SCC. Hmm? So even now looking in, they look like a capacitor of A2CC. Same thing. So okay, this is just the uh, hypothetical idea, but let's see how we can go about doing it. So first let's see how we can generate this voltage. How can you generate this voltage A2 times V test? I have V test applied here. Yeah, I mean I already have this guy, right? This has a conductance GM2, output conductance G2. So the output voltage is what? A2. Minus A2 times V test. So we already have that voltage. So next thing is to generate a current which is this voltage times SCC. How can I generate that current? I will just put a capacitor there, right? That's it. Is that okay? Yes. So I will go and put a ca uh, capacitor like this. So this is 0, this is minus A2 V test. So what is the current flowing here in this direction? This is CC. Okay. So now all I need is to uh, find an element that senses the current in one branch and copies the current in another branch here. We are basically sensing the current flowing through the capacitor in this direction and injecting an equal current in another branch. So what kind of element uh, do you know does this job? Sorry? What? No. Uh, yeah, I mean see, do, do, simple question, right? I just need to sense a current and it should replicate the current in some other branch. What kind of element does it? 
करंट मिरर बट आई मीन वॉट कैंड ऑफ कंट्रोल सोर्स दिस करंट मिरर इज स्लाइटली डिफरेंट नो नो वी आर सेंसिंग एंड इनपुट करंट एंड आउटपुट इज ऑल्सो करंट इट्स अ करंट कंट्रोल करंट सोर्स ओके सो हाउ कैन इंप्लीमेंट अ करंट कंट्रोल करंट सोर्स यूजिंग ट्रांसिस्टर common gate see remember voltage control voltage source is a voltage buffer current control current source is current buffer that's all and what is the simplest current buffer you know common gate okay so if you want to implement it you will just put a common gate so what i'll do is i'll take the capacitor here just slightly redraw it so for the common gate current buffer where should i uh, give the input current <coughs> source is the input so I'll, let's say i take an nmos i'll feed the current to the source and the output current should be taken from drain right so this is the output current i'll okay of course you need to bias it so you put some current source here some bias voltage here and blah 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 that's all I mean, this is not very great because see, uh, for an ideal current buffer, this impedance must be ground. But here, what is the impedance looking here? One by gm. So it is not an ideal current buffer, but it is the best we have. You choose a large enough gm so that looking in kind of mimics a ground. So, right? Cool. So now let me uh, go ahead and draw the complete schematic. so in our case we have been looking at a pmos uh, second stage so this is the pmos second stage and what we are doing is at the output we have this capacitor other end is connected to the current buffer so the output i'll add the capacitor cc and then add the current buffer like this Okay. Of course, one uh, trivial way to finish the circuit is say I put uh, bias this guy properly at the first stage here and uh, say this is done, right? but of course this is not very great because now you see you need to have an additional branch here that you need to bias it based of current so uh, that's what pe pe made people think and come up with the final thing which we'll look at it now so uh, now all we need is a current buffer right so uh, i don't want to have a separate branch like this is it possible to reuse the first stage for this that is in the first stage which is the differential amplifier have you seen a differential amplifier topology which uses a current buffer a cascode if you remember a cascode is the same we had some current that we buffered using a current buffer to increase the output resistance okay so we already have a current buffer in a cascode so i mean we can as well try and uh, reuse it okay so what we what we'll do is this oops this other plate is here this is what we need in a normal cascode diffamp we'll have a case like this this is my diff pair this is the cascode nmos and the bottom tail current source this is our normal cascode diffamp so bottom i have a cascode uh, nmos at the top what should i have to finish this a cascode pmos what planning okay so i'll do the same thing here also and make the direct connection like this Right. 
so this is now the casco transistor that is doing both the jobs it is being used as the current buffer to increase the output resistance of our first stage at the same time we are reusing this guy to act as a current buffer to kill the feed forward path okay and let me complete this guy Oops. now if you uh, think about it in simple terms what we have done is see earlier what we did was to kill the uh, feed forward we put a voltage buffer in this direction now instead of a voltage buffer we have put a current buffer that's all so this will again kill the feed forward path in simpler terms that's what we have been doing okay so this is the uh, full schematic and this is called uh, ahuja compensation after bhupendra huja who came up with this technique and the fun fact is uh, he is an alumnus of iit kanpur okay cool so now uh, there are few variants of this i mean one simple variant is see uh, in the first stage is there some other transistor which acts as a current buffer huh the pmos this guy is also a current buffer so i can also use this to uh, do the job so for and for doing that i'll take the capacitor here connect it like this same thing it the capacitor is going to the input of a current buffer output of the current buffer is fed so we can either do you know uh, this or this or you can also do a combination of the two so you can say that uh, my total capacitor i'll split as half put one half like this one half like that and so on. and each has its own advantages and disadvantages i mean we'll not go into a lot of details okay will this affect the operation of the dm no it will not it i mean with respect to the dc operating point it will not change with respect to the impedances also it doesn't change a lot you'll find that it will add some extra poles and zeros which might be very far apart again i'll not go into details because it becomes very cumbersome okay so i mean so the bottom line is the best way to eliminate this rhp0 is to either add this resistor in series with your cc this is very simple if your first stage is a normal defamp and uh, for some reason if you are to use a cas code for the first stage say for increasing the dc gain a simpler way is to do this you reuse the current buffer in your first stage and get it off okay so those two are the uh, common techniques okay so let me once draw the two stage op amp so i'll take a simple case where i am uh, putting this resistor rc to cancel the zero right let me label the transistors m0 m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 m6 okay correct right yeah i mean like i mentioned uh, it see you the point is this path needs to be active at high frequencies okay because the zero usually comes at a high frequency so it you'll find out that actually this path is active at high frequencies it doesn't uh, uh, affect it a lot again the act of doing this will introduce some additional poles and zeros and that will explain your question 
but I'm not getting into a lot of details because that becomes very cumbersome. But like you mentioned, th this will affect the regular operation to a small extent in the sense that it will introduce some additional ports and zeros. But usually they are far apart that you don't have to worry about it too much. But the exact analysis, I'm not doing it because it becomes very, let's see. So here, uh, I'll form the negative feedback like this, right? And if I have a load resistor and capacitor, I'll uh, put it here and I'll connect it to the common mode so that I don't draw any DC current. And remember, I also need to uh, generate the biases for these and in uh, practice, we'll have one small reference current available to us say some 1 micrograms or something, a 0.1 micrograms, only one reference current source, we will generate all the required biases from that. So, you can put a current mirror like this and basically copy. And again, to make sure your currents are copied properly, you have the same lens for all the transistors. Okay. You only scale the widths. Okay. And if this has some width of W, if this needs to carry a current I0, you scale it as I0 by I rep times W0. You guys know that, right? And similarly, if this has a current I2, you make it okay. Cool. And again, uh, to find the, I mean, you need to make sure this loop is stable. So, we will basically break the loop here and uh, find the loop gain. So, we will apply the input here and find what comes and you can model that as at a block level like this. So, this is GM1, it is conductance capacitance and then you have GM2, this compensation resistor and capacitor the second stage output conductance and capacitance and in addition I will also have the load conductance and load capacitance. Okay. Okay. So, uh, in this can you tell me what will be the, uh, what is the unit again frequency? in terms of these guys what was your omega u yeah but what was it in terms of the elements hmm? sorry no no that's i'm i'm talking about the unity gain frequency Okay, what is the unity gain frequency in terms of DC gain and other stuff? A0 times P1, what is the DC gain here? GM1 by, oops, sorry. This is A0 times P1, this is GM1 by G1, GM2 by, I mean you also have GL, okay, so G2 plus GL. So let me actually call uh, probably let us say G2 plus GL equal to uh, some GL prime. Similarly, C2 plus CL, I will call it as some CL prime. Hmm? So, this is some G, uh, GL prime. And what is the first pole approximately? G1 by CC times. Prime. So, what is the simplified to? This goes off, this goes off. So, what is this? Gm1 by, by Cc, okay. Fine. And again, we know what is uh, this. So let me write it clearly, probably. So, my DC gain is Gm1 by G1 times Gm2 by Gl prime. My first pole is approximately at 
g1 by cc times gm2 by gl prime so that gives my omega u to be approximately gm1 by cc my second pole is at what frequency roughly gm2 huh c2 c s ah uh, love c s prime is it okay i mean okay see actual expression is this right gm2 times this division by the total capacitance i mean you guys remember right this basically is a division between these two capacitors times gm2 that is the conductance you will have roughly and the capacitance is basically uh, this output cap in series with these two guys and again if i assume c1 is much smaller it simplifies to this we saw it today also right what did we see yeah this is the expression gm2 by the output capacitance okay so I'll directly write this and we also have a third pole roughly and that was roughly at 1 by rc times 1 by c1 and here i'll choose the rc to be exactly 1 by gm2 to cancel the zero so this will be at gm2 by c1 okay so uh, what will be the uh, total phase at the unit gain frequency what is the phase contributed by the first pole minus 90 and then we have a second pole that is minus tan inverse omega u by p2 that's okay let's write it like this and then we have some small phase due to the third pole i'll say it's some theta 3 so what is the phase margin same thing 90 minus the same guys okay Theta three. Okay. So okay, maybe let me take this so that you will have the expressions. Oops. Okay. so let us say you have to design for a given uh, you are only given omega u and uh, cl hmm? okay and you are asked to go uh, and design this op amp oh, how will you start what will be your starting point what is omega u depend on j1 by cc you know neither of them and uh, we have we have been given cl what will cl determine p2 right i mean cl prime but cl prime is almost approximately same as cl okay so i mean so basically cl can tell you what uh, p2 is but uh, how will i fix the location of p2 no no what will fix the location of p2 finally phase margin right Your P two must be far apart from your unit gain frequency, hmm. and how far apart it is decides your phase margin. You have not been given phase margin, so what do you do? Assume. That's all. Assume, right? You know. So what is the phase margin? You can assume. Sixty. Yeah. Let's go with sixty degrees, or whatever. Let's start with sixty. Assume phase margin is some sixty degree. So from that, what can I get? phase margin is dependent on this and this so here again i'll ignore the phase due to the third pole so that gives me p2 p2 is basically gm2 by cl i know the value of cl so from p2 and cl what can i find gm2 okay so gm2 is known so basically now we have used the uh, information given about cl What is the one thing that we haven't used? 
ओमेगा यू वॉट इज ओमेगा यू सो वॉट कैन यू डू यू नीड टू फाइंड बोथ ऑफ दम यू नीड टू फाइंड बोथ जी एम वन एंड सी सी वॉट कैन यू डू दैन ओमेगा यू इज गिवन राइट आई मीन सिंपल सिंपल क्वेश्चन राइट यू हैव बीन गिवन वॉट ओमेगा यू इज आई नीड टू फाइंड बोथ ऑफ दम सो वॉट विल आई डू यू असीम वन एंड डू दी अदर राइट एंड यूजली या आई मीन यू कैन असीम एदर ऑफ दम बट सी हियर एंड ऑल वी कैंड ऑफ असीम सी वन इज मच स्मॉलर दैन सी सी सिंड इट सो इट्स बेटर टू असीम यू नो सी सी सो दैट इट्स गैरंटी टू बी ग्रेटर दैन सी वन so that that will give you cc and this will give you gm1 okay. you can also do the other way around but then you'll have to find what cc you get and ensure it's greater than that that's all but in study we don't have c1 right yeah i mean you get some rough estimates right yes, you'll have some rough estimates say, let's say capacitors will be order of some tens of femtofarads or something okay. so, we can assume like if around to be cl no cl will be cc to be around cl that you cannot you cannot i mean you can assume there is no harm but it doesn't have to be as large as cl right so i mean this kind of uh, sets your uh, designs this finishes your design at a block level right now you know all these guys cc and what about rc rc is 1 by gm2 i know gm2 so this also gives me rc right so at a, a block level you have your design is done gm1 is done these guys are done gm2 is done so now i mean if you were to uh, start the transistor level design i know gm2 what is gm2 in terms of the transistors gm and what's gm no gm2 right i said gm2 let me write it here ha huh? sorry uh, which transistors gm determines gm2 M five, okay. This is the second stage. So you kind of know uh, G M five. So what is G M five in terms of? So it's basically two i into some mu c ox w by l. So I need to know uh, both i and w by l. Hmm? I know neither of them. And same, you can also write it as. Mu C ox W by L times VGS minus VTH. So now, I mean, I need to find the aspect ratio W by L. Hmm? So again, I don't know. I mean, I seem to have uh, less information. So what can I do? VGS. Yeah, you can assume VGS. Okay. So you can assume some overdrive voltage. I know. I'll say some two fifty or three hundred millivolt, whatever. right i mean you can choose it so that uh, if you assume this over drive this voltage is fixed that will set this voltage right so once you know the over drive voltage basically the gate to source voltage is known then you can actually go and find what is the current and w by l okay so this will from uh, v over drive and gm is that okay Okay, we'll see in the later classes how we can actually uh, find these guys more systematically instead of relying on uh, the equations. But anyways, if you know these voltage drive and GM, you can actually find all these. So now we know the current flowing through the transistor. I know the uh, W by L, so I can choose the length to be something, and that will give me W. and how can i choose the length what might be my consideration sorry sorry yeah that is one thing minimum length is fixed but uh, is there some other criteria that might fix the length if i increase the length what will change in the transistor r not will change right you want some particular dc gain okay so you want the second stage to have some modest dc gain say some 10 or 20 so you can see what kind of length will give you that gain and if the minimum length gives it perfect else you slightly increase the length 
and from that you can find the width. It increases the capacitors, but again the point is you are putting a large enough CC that it is okay. So now once this is known right, you'll, you can actually find out what is your uh, C1 right, because what is C1? C1 is a capacitance at this node, what does it depend on? What is the total capacitance at this node? I mean first what all transistors can contribute? 4 and 2. So 4, 2 and 5. Hmm? So uh, what will be the capacitance due to the transistor M4? Drain to bulk, drain to body. For, from M2, same thing drain to bulk. For M5, gate to source. Again remember gate capacitance is much higher than all drain capacitors. So C1 is almost dominated by your CGS. Okay. So this directly gives me my CGS. Once you uh, design my transistor M5, so I can find CGS and I can find what is C1. And you can go and check if your uh, CC value chosen is actually fine. Okay. C1 is known and then check CC. Right. So I mean once I uh, design the transistor M5, the current density of the transistor is fixed. Or just, I mean I know what that is. So once that is set, can I say something about uh, current densities of other transistors? I know the current density of this transistor. So yeah, as he mentions, we saw for avoiding systematic offset, even these two transistors must have the same current density. right? So that designs your M3, M4 also, that is also done now. Because now you know the current density 3, 4, 5 must be equal. So that will fix your uh, other 3 and 4 transistors. <coughs> now for the first stage you can do the same thing, I know, I know what is my GM1. Hmm? So uh, what is capital GM1? small gm of the input transistors right i can again go and assume some overdrive voltages right because I, I, what is the dc bias at the gate vcm roughly at vdd by 2 i can assume uh, this is at vdd by 2 roughly i can assume some gate to source voltage so that this current source has some reasonable vds so once i assume the vgs for the first transistor again the same thing so from GM1 and the assumed overdrive, you can find all the currents and width. Right, this is one way you will actually can go about uh, designing this. Huh? And again, uh, one thing to keep in mind is, uh, if, you, if you want a phase margin of 60, don't exactly start with 60. Have some margin, right? Because First of all, uh, I mean, say you put some 3 or 4 degree extra to start with. I mean, simply because our calculations are all approximate, they are very good approximations, mind you, but I cannot say whether my phase margin is 60.1 degree or 61.2 degree. That much I cannot say, right? And not just that, here I have ignored this theta 3 which is coming from the third pole that can contribute 1 or 2 degrees here and there mm. and not just that I had made more approximations for example this is my first stage I modeled it like this where I assumed only the dominant pole at the output mm. does it have some other pole we also have a non-dominant pole for the stage here okay and what is the approximate pole location there What is the pole location at this node? So roughly it is GM3 by C and what is the total cap there? I will have a fourth pole at GM3. What is the total capacitor at this node? Again firstly you look at what all transistors can contribute. What all transistors? M1, 3 and something else? 4. All these will contribute to the capacitance at this node. So M1 will, from M1 you will have the capacitor, which capacitor? Drain to bulk. From M3 and M4? 
So M3 also has the gate connected here, mind you. Gate to source of M3 and gate to source of M4. So uh, the additional pole here will be due to 2 CGS3. I am assuming CGS for M3 and M4 are equal. So this is 2 CGS3 and I will also have a 0 if you remember at 2 times this frequency. Okay. So you will have all these non-dominant poles that usually will be at a much higher frequency because here this pole it is at some GM by some parasitic capacitor and my second pole is already at GM2 by load capacitor. So this will be at a much lower frequency than the non-dominant poles. So these guys will contribute much smaller phase shift, maybe 1 or 2 degrees, so you better uh, choose some margin to start. Hmm? And actually, okay, we have few minutes, we have someone has class, yes. that's okay, I will stop it.